Forge Labs invited me to a Game of Thrones event. Myself and a bunch of other content creators are spread across the known world with one goal, be the last kingdom standing. I served under King Ryan III, and for the next seven days, I will do all that he asks, ranging from building a magnificent castle to assassinating all kings in rule. Hey, Shadow! Will I survive the event and see my king sit atop the final throne? Watch to the end to find out. Alright, day one. We have 48 hours before PvP is turned on, and the gear we have will most likely be what we have for the rest of the week. My team started in the desert, so the lack of trees we found in the distance is where we headed. I took down a few logs, grabbed some stone, and made myself basic tools to feel more comfortable in the landscape. We, among four other teams, are to start off in the unknown world, in our own territories. Lagundo, the king of the north, Sean, the swamp king of the east, Shadow and Sneeve sharing the land to the west, and Ryan, my king, taking on the dry terrain of the south with us. Now we all have land we can explore in the first couple of days, but we aren't allowed to venture too far out. So my first plan is to break that rule and scout the Greenland north. Okay, before I dip out on the team, let's establish the other rules I may have not hit on yet. 1. We cannot go get Totems of Undying, strictly not allowed, that's a pretty fair point. 2. The end is completely turned off, meaning I can't go get an Elytra and skydive on innocent civilians. 3. No Nether PvP, which makes sense because the Nether can be a scary place, but I would have rather no strength too, seems a little too OP for me. 4. Every king has his own territory- oh, oh yeah, that's right, we already hit on that one. Okay, time to break that rule. So yes, I'm supposed to be in the desert area, but with such a lack of food around here, I took some animals' lives before heading down into the caves from the green land up north. In reality, I'm not really allowed to venture pretty far out, and I kinda did just to go find a spot to mine down in. And by the time I already got there, it was nighttime, so I slowly staircased my way down because this place can get scary really fast. I opened up down into a cave, which is super spooky, but made my way to my first diamonds, and I believe the first diamonds on the server. But since this place is super scary, I need to grab full iron right off the bat so I don't have to worry about dying. So once I had all this iron, I went into a wall and just smelted it. I don't want any white walkers coming and finding me when I'm in the n naked. Yeah, that, that makes sense. If you have seen Game of Thrones, you know what a white walker is. I do not. So when I see something I don't recognize, I take it very seriously. Plus, this place was super dark and crawling with the unknown, but my goals are simple. Diamonds. As soon as I can get full diamond, I'll feel a little bit safer. So... Eight diamonds in, and Korn's already dead. He died right away to a whale. Did it really have to be within the first 30 minutes of the server opening up? Why did it have to be Korn who died first? Couldn't it have been someone else? Some other team? Thankfully, Korn was allowed to stay alive, and the first hour of the event is now a grace period. And since that was in effect during the rest of my time in the caves, I'm just gonna go collect as many diamonds as I can while I can't die. Meaning... Okay, sorry, those edits are just so fun. But after a solid hour of mining, we walked away with 62 diamonds. That is more than plenty of the hardened blue rock. I made myself some diamond armor and got out of the caves. I need to head back to my own territory before someone catches me out and about. Once I finally breached the hill and was able to see the desert again, I spotted a floating raft in the water? I don't know what that's all about. I would assume my teammates had made a spot away from the White Walkers on the open land, but that would only make sense if Korn hadn't already died to a whale, meaning isn't the water a lot more dangerous? But upon approach, I saw three of my teammates. I have missed y'all, boys. The reunion with the boys is great. Seeing someone after an hour of being in darkness was amazing. Apparently, after Korn's death, he just focused on making cabbage rolls. What a chef. I gave him a bit of armor, and we just talked about the plans for the rest of the day. So why are we out in the middle of the ocean here? I know, that's, that's a good question. Because the zombies. Because the zombies. zombies. Okay, but the whales. But the thing is, so, the whales are even worse. Right? So, like, this is a bad idea. So that's kind of what I'm it's imagining. Just a idea. So we just wait till daytime, we go back to land, we do some build. Yeah. yeah. Personally, I wanted to go to the nether. Since we're in the desert, we have access to a ton of lava, so I just wanted to make a portal and go there as fast as possible. Check it out, you know? So I made a semi-quick portal, grabbed some flint from the guys, and found a fortress instantly. One of my mates followed me in as I was setting up the blaze grinder and had about the same reaction as I did. Oh my, oh my god. Oh my goodness, what are the chances? Right? It's right next to it. However, what was even better than just having a fortress right here is a bastion right there in the distance. So yeah, basically they're just sitting right next to each other outside of our portal. 
But before we could go over there and check it out, we separated and grinded some blazes for blaze rods. There are two amazing things you can do with blaze rods, or blaze powder, more or less. You may think it's specifically for strength too. Even though I don't really want to use it, I'm gonna have to, but that's not the real goal. One of the best armor sets in the game is Maximilian, and the only way to get Maximilian is with blaze rods and double smelted iron. So the first thing we're grinding out in the nether before we go for netherite is just some blaze rods. After I had plenty, I made my way over to my teammate and we went to loot the bastions. This one, however, was not a treasure bastion, just a normal golden trophy bastion? I don't really know how to say this one. It's just like the gold pile on top. We grabbed a large amount of gold from the piggies, which we will give back to them later, and looted the rest. I didn't find anything good at the end and ended up just giving one netherite scrap to Blincy. So you can't really call me a bad teammate, even if my goal of the seven days is to break every possible rule. <laughs> but enough on that. Uh, anyway, we went back to the overworld where we met up with Naked Ryan. Welcome in. Hi. You are dumb. You are dumb. We talked about this. Hey, what do you mean? Ryan. Maximilian armor is better oh, than I diamond. I needed the blaze rods, and I'm I'm getting two sets. I'm getting netherite and Maximilian. What do you mean? Uh, uh. He was complaining that I made diamond armor. Well, sorry, but being a nudist isn't my goal, Sir Ryan the Third. In reality, he had been mining with a few other teammates and was holding out on all other armor until he could get his hands on Maximilian. But before we could go check that out, Protagonist showed up, a fellow creator in the dark about Maximilian armor. So Ryan took us all to the mine where I realized I could already make the armor. So to be the very best that no one ever was, I made myself Maximilian armor and Ryan diamond armor, cause the slowpoke still refused to join the clothes. Even my assassin mind can't handle Ryan's bare butt and crown staring me down 24-7. You may have also noticed that I didn't actually put on the armor set yet. Well, I was only going to make one of these sets, and getting it max enchanted before wearing it was the goal. But while conversing with the guys, Ryan mentioned a few base idea locations. However, before anything else, I wanted to secure the nether, make sure no other structures were full of loot for anyone else to take, so I went on a small solo adventure to find a new bastion or fortress. Along the way, I ran into a good friend of mine on Shadow's team, Shin. I talked with him for a little bit. Uh, hello? I, don't worry, I'm not gonna I'd see you, my friend. Hi. What's oh, up? hello. What's going I know we're on, not meant dude? To be interacting. Friendly, but, but <laughs> I'm not gonna go through your portal. But how's it going, my friend? It's going good, dude. Nice to see you. I see you're in iron. That's uh. Yeah, listen, listen. Our our king. There, we give him all go. the diamonds, okay? I'll give Wait, you. Hold on, I'll what? give you your own. That is a nice flag you've got there, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> That's. Uh, I wish I had. No <laughs> I wish I had mine, but I I don't right now. Um, that is unfortunate. Oh wow! Yeah, first it's the uh, listen. It's first it's the no diamonds, and then we got a unicorn for a banner. Okay, so. <laughs> After an interesting conversation with Shin and the loss of five diamonds, I learned that Shadow is a pure dictator, and in my mind, I now have to take him out in any way necessary. I did continue my trip, however, and found absolutely nothing of use, really, so I headed back to the overworld. I found Ryan back at the trading post where he told me he found three perfect locations that he scouted for an upcoming castle build. I headed over to check it out with him, and of the three, one being at the very top of a mountain, one being at the smaller peak of the mountain, and one resting in the valley, I liked the valley one the best. Ryan and I agreed, and on morning of day two, we'll start a home with our comrades right here. To begin the day, I logged on to find a grave site with a ton of gear in a chest. I assumed one of my mates had fallen and fully eliminated on day one, but to my surprise, my DMs had one message in it. Well, that was unfortunate to watch. Most of you may think my king is dead on day one. That is simply not the case. Each king has 10 lives. So basically, three kings died on day one. Sneeve, Shadow, and Ryan, apparently. Why is it when I get off this stuff happens? But what I mean by 10 lives is when a king dies, a heart is taken away from their total health. So that's why I say 10 lives. But since my king isn't on right now to discuss this, I need to get back to work and gear up. So I can eventually fulfill his wishes my way. You know, you'll see what I mean later. The first place I went was back to the nether. I was on the hunt for a bastion, as well as levels. Since I didn't find a treasure bastion yet, I was determined to at least once in this world. So I traversed the nether in search of one, along the way gathering plenty of quartz to push me to level 37. But I took a break from that as I found myself the bastion of choice. 
If you're new to the channel, you won't know that I have a slight habit of calling one of the sides of this big boy boring. But since this time before I even got to the Bastion, I was met with a devil dog and rolled into the next dimension, we might end up calling it slightly less boring. I made my way upstairs trying to find some sort of loot, stumbling upon a couple chests that were meh at best, mined through the wall, and found the real treasure. I took out four of the piggies and opened the chest to find a piercing four crossbow as well as an unbreaking three crossbows. So basically halfway to the god bow in a single chest. I now have a lot of high hopes for the harder area in this bastion. Speaking of which, I made my way over there and hopped straight in, taking care of each level's mobs as I scaled the walls downward. Thankfully, none of the mobs were too decked out in special gear from the mod pack that was mostly reserved for the White Walkers. The chest at the bottom had two pieces of diamond armor, but the one I was more interested in was the boots. They had Frost Walker on them, which is an interesting enchant for a desert dweller, but it could come in handy later. Then I got the netherite ingot you're almost guaranteed and got the heck out of dodge. To continue my gearing up stage, I went back to farming quartz, but I did make a grave mistake. To heal up my pickaxe and combine my new crossbow, I used my levels when I was above level 30. If you know enchanting, you know I should have at least used those levels until I was at level 30. Then, and only then, combining the extra gear afterwards. Basically, I just wasted levels for fun. But I wasn't to stop there. I went back to mining quartz for hours at this point, basically making me the quartz dictator. 45 levels and I'm feeling good. Let's make a bad decision. I used all of my levels on pickaxes, re-rolling, re-enchanting, and combining them until I had two for netherite mining. One with efficiency three and one with so touch efficiency four, both carrying a breaking of course. But what was I thinking? I could have had max maximilian armor at this point. Dummy. Thankfully, my efforts were for nothing. Like I said, I was going to go into the mines with them, which was my very next adventure. I went down into the depths of head nether and began searching for gray iron. I really only should be getting enough for tools, but in the pursuit of my own side quest, I should at least find enough for a valiant set of armor. Well, one to compete with the Maximilian set, that is. However, since you're no stranger to netherite mining, here is the gist. Mine in long tunnels for a super long time, find a bit, take an hour to find a singular piece again, and boom, done. 40 pieces of netherite later and sanity surely lost. Now we can go home and make some good armor. Before that, however, I have to have the perfect diamond armor and tools. So it was back to level 40 for your boy. Then I used that to test my luck for a god axe, which happened eventually. Then I used what I had left to get a sharp three short sword, which is a hilted weapon included in these mods. Will I use it? Not sure. Did I think so at the time? Yeah. But my final enchants before leaving this area were some simple level ones on a couple books. You may be thinking, why make sharp one books and combine them? Well, because it seems easier than getting a sharp five, okay? So over the course of the next hour or two, I have to gather around 85 levels. Yes, you heard me right. To make one sharp five book, I have to have around 85 levels. I think, if I remember math correctly. But that's even a lie, cause that's just for the book itself, not even putting it on my axe. So yeah, throughout the stutter step of math, I hope, I showed the clips of me killing zombie piggies, cause I thought it would be plenty of levels. I was lied to. And now the gang has pulled up on me for round two. This, this was an issue. Since that didn't work in my favor, I was just back to good old quartz. Then once I had enough levels, I would check in and see if I could enchant. Then I would combine what I had and go back to getting levels. I did this for quite some time. Levels to enchant, enchant to getting sharp, sharp one to sharp two, go back for levels, then enchant, then combine, levels, enchant, combine, etc. I think you get the point at this point. Wait, point? Until eventually I was able to make a sharp five book for my axe. This was a great moment. Now to just add it to the actual axe. Aha! The best item on the server has been crafted. You proud of me yet? Hopefully, I'm gonna use this thing to kill a dictator. Before I left the nether, I wanted to enchant my gear as well. I started with the boots and legs, now I'm depressed. The only thing I got out of another 42 levels was a prop 4 chest plate, so let me just go gather quartz real quick. Again, I'm not even going to show you this. After being boring in the nether for so long, I was back in the overworld turning my amazing gear into netherite. It was really the best I could do, mining quartz is almost the most annoying thing possible, and to tell you the truth, over the course of my time on the server, I've mined over 10,000 quartz. So maybe you can understand my pain now? But hey, I turned all of my armor and most of my good tools all over to netherite, which, by the way, amazing. I'm almost positive I'm the first one on the server with full netherite, but I won't be the last. Now, since most of my day two has been spent on me, it was time to check another task off my list, base building. I wanted to gather a few materials for the guys slash myself for when I get into building, and I started with wood, specifically dark oak, because that's really all we have around here. 
Then, after lighting up the area around the base, which let me tell you was absolutely needed, I witnessed a death in chat. Of course, I paid my respects, as you all should, and continued to work. I grabbed a few stacks of sand and turned it into sandstone for the guys not to use later. What, do you think I'm going to be on this server 24-7? Ah, I got stuff to do. Fortnite to play. <laughs> that, that was too hard to say. Can you even get through saying that with a straight face? When I got back on the server later in the day, I found all of my sandstone used to create a maze? I don't know what... I, I No, 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 no. So yeah, I took it down. Heck my teammates. If you're going to do it, do it right. Or don't do it at all. No, I'm, I'm kidding. I mean, well, I took it down. I don't really care about that. But I do not hate my teammates for using all my materials. In reality, I just have a super good idea for the wall design that I'm going to knock out in the next two hours. Also, I later found out that the person who did this was Corker. And Corker was dead. <laughs> he died on an expedition to go see Lagundo, which not only wasn't allowed, so we have another rule breaker. Uh, he died along the way, so uh, rip corn. After I gathered all my hard-earned materials back, I began construction of the first pillar to our castle. I went with a deep slate base that will contain dark oak almost all the way to the top, and then of course finish it off with some sandstone. But when I headed back to the coast for water, I spotted Protagonist, a fellow teammate lost to the desert. Actually, he just had no idea where the base was. So I took him home. On the way, we found Survivor as well, fighting for his life in the desert. So now we got two guys at home base gathering materials for your boy. For the rest of day two, all I did was work on the castle. I finished up the first pillar, and once that looked amazing, I worked on the next one, cranking that out as fast as I could, because I was tired at this point. It's like early AMs for me. But before I slept, I built the middle gate, which does look very nice. And then just to finish off the structure a little bit, I did the rest of the deep slate walls on the left side and the right side. I don't want anyone to attack the base. If Ryan gets on, this will at least have an indicator of a base here, so maybe they won't just hop the fence or blow it up or whatever. Although, after the first day of building, this place is coming together nicely. I started off day three seeing Survivor doing his fishing thing. Of course, it's been a few hours since I worked on the wall, and it's still incomplete, so I had to tend to that. But using a level one enchanted shovel sucked, so I ran to the nether portal. Once in, I began getting a few more levels to get to level 30. However, while I was in the nether, Survivor died. What in the- why, why did my best teammate have to blow up? He sent me the clip and it- oh, it's just a tragedy to see. He was probably like a half second away from that shield working too. Oh, he could have survived that. Too bad Survivor wasn't able to survive. Sorry, I had to say it. It's just ironic. But now the bad part is I have a ton of pressure on me since Ryan's bodyguard was just killed. And since he was dead, I had to go make sure his stuff was safe and didn't despawn. I grabbed the 30 levels I needed and headed back to find his corpse. There he was, just dead in a hole. I went through his stuff and put most of it in a chest. He had a Prop 4 Maximilian helmet that I helped myself to, but other than that, his gear was to lay rest out in the sand. Well, since death is for real now, I figured it best to make strength potions. I got all I needed from the trading hall and made myself a batch. Then I returned to base to mourn my friend and use those 30 levels on the perfect shovel. With that item acquired, I took to the desert to tear down all of its stability. Your sand is mine. Once I had enough, I returned to building the first wall. We need protection, and since I'm like the only one left at this point, I had to do it myself. Actually, there are plenty of us alive. Kinda. Myself, Ryan, Protagonist, Scavage, MX, and Blincy are still alive. We'll basically turn into the core six at this point. And we started off with ten, mind you. Back to the wall, once the structure was done, I added in the railings as well as the walls on the front, and it was looking really good. The last time I built a castle wall was... Well, actually, I don't think I've ever built one, so I guess beginner's luck? But while I was finishing up the wall, an unknown player was headed from Lagundo's territory for a visit while PvP was still off. The surprise was Looney! He was here to talk with Ryan about an alliance between the North and the South. But since my king wasn't online, we chatted for a bit instead. I showed him Survivor's Grave and gave him a general tour of the area. How's it going? Uh, all good, all good. How are you doing? I'm mourning the death oh, I... of Survivor at the moment. But it is a bit of a funky situation, right? Because you found me at the death of Survivor location. But since we had some time to kill before the meet, I went back to gathering sand for the build. However, once it hits nighttime, too many mobs spawn, so getting the sand really sucks, meaning back to the nether for some levels. Once again, I think you've seen me handle the quartz trade long enough, so here it is in a gist. Once I had 40 levels, I went back home to test out the enchants on my Maximilian gear, and totally not because I was starving to death. 
Now back at base, I attempted to make max gear, but was disappointed with only getting prot 3 on the boots, and the pants just didn't want to cooperate at all. So I tried until I was out of levels once again. Don't click off the video, I swear I'm not going to show you the nether again, I just, I'll cut it, okay? Finally, after however many levels, I had gotten at least protection 3 on these pants, and we have a willing set of Maximilian armor. Now that I can rely on two pairs of gear, I went back to work on the castle. It looked a little lopsided, so I fixed that by adding in that second sandstone wall. This one wasn't as easy though, as while I was building it, I had to go back and forth to get more sand, but I did thankfully finish it up in time for our meet with Looney. And by then, Ryan and Protagonist had both been on, so we were able to scale the castle walls and watch as our negotiator enter the castle. I can only imagine what it looks like for three people to be on three different sections of the wall, aiming a crossbow at your face. We really shouldn't have scared our ally that much, huh? Oh, that, oh, we should have rethought that, actually. Once we welcomed Looney into the base, we began our negotiations for an alliance. Quite the location. Yeah, it was yeah. truly we remarkable. Looking around, we saw bunch of beautiful mountains and we're like wow that'd be great i have traveled a long 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 way to get here lagundo at least sent word that he would want to discuss a possible partnership i've um i've, I've had a busy couple of days it's um it's I'm been sure. interesting i was caught in a uh, in a snowstorm north of the wall while everybody uh, moved yeah. south and and set up camp um, so it means i i haven't been able to uh, to speak to lagundo because we we were, we were very um we want to be extremely honorable with it, so we haven't communicated oh, outside of the game at all. That means I found his message, and I went straight here. And gotcha. um, I actually think it's a great idea, though. Even though we haven't yeah. been able to discuss terms, because we are on opposite sides of the continent. Exactly. We are so far away, so we're never going to run into each other. And on top of that, we both come from the least hospitable climates imaginable. It is, uh, it is truly terrifying north of the wall. I mean, as a whole, because we're on opposite sides of the map, it would be very, very hard to reinforce each other mm -hmm. if, per se, we were attacked. So I don't think that should be part of the terms, because that would I, be... I, I agree. I think we should uh, look way past that. I think we should have loftier goals. You guys can count on us to not kill you, not attack you, or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, in exchange, we would request the same. And then we just got to figure out some more minor details when it comes a little closer to the date. But you can have our assurance that we will not attack you nor the rest of your kingdom uh, for the majority of the event unless it's required by Sean. Yeah. Let's, um, if it can be done with an alliance, you could plan on having our support. Let's phrase it more specifically. And let's make sure that we are the last two kingdoms standing. And with Gundo as an ally, we only have one target now, Shadow. And it's my job to hunt him down. Okay, I only ran away for dramatic effect. I still can't kill him yet. Technically, since Shadow is not online, I have to wait until he is to go and kill him. But that doesn't mean I can't go scout his base. So as of King Ryan's orders, I headed to the semi-known location of King Shadow. I hiked over mountains, crossed rivers with my Frostwalker until I found resemblance of a base. But it was just a few torches and maybe a mine. No way they went underground, right? Then I remembered we scouted for our high ground too. Maybe they're obi one me right now and are at the top of one of these mountains. So I looked towards the hills and as I got closer, I saw the wall or the short gate, I guess. You could probably just hop over this thing. I climbed around the back of their mountain and looked for a way in. It wasn't as hard as I thought. As I just mentioned, I can just jump over the walls and take a picture for my king. We have cameras in the medieval time, right? Anyway, these were just scouting shots to show him what Shadow's been up to. But stop, you just broke one of the rules past me. Technically, I am not allowed to jump over the wall. We won't find that out until way, way later in the event, but just so you know, I've kind of already started breaking some rules. And since a few rules pop up much later, uh, we just won't question it. How about that? I headed back to base to tell Ryan the good news, but apparently he was in the mines getting diamonds, as if we need more of those. I went down to try and find him, yelling his name in the echoing caves, but never saw him. Ryan. Hello. Ryan. So instead, I grabbed a bit of redstone and diamonds to say it wasn't a wasted trip. While working on the next sections of the wall, mostly just laying down the deep slate path, a message popped up in chat. Ryan fell from a high place. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. This man is going to die to nature before he can even flourish as king. I met him at the bed and we started our journey to find his gear. The entire time we were 100 miles into the earth, this man chose to come down here naked again. 
What is it with this man and streaking me? Well, eventually, after many heart attacks, Ryan and I found his gear. I cleared out the mobs and he secured the stuff so we can head back to the surface. From there, I sent him the images of Shadow's base so he can get an idea of what he's sending me into. However, if I catch Shadow off guard, he should be an easy kill. The rest of my day was basically just spent on the wall. I used all of the deep slate we had to finish off the layering on one side, then I had to go gather more deep slate for the second section. Once I had both sides of the wall done, all I had left was the good old decor. Thankfully, laying down stairs and walls isn't too hard, so I was able to finish this part off in only like three hours. Yeah, that's right. That's how long it took. I cut up these sections for you to watch, all right? This is hours of my time. Oh, you wanna know what I was dealing with the entire time? Here, let me just show you some of the scavage highlights. Oh my God. Person? He's at the outpost. I'll go get him. No, no, he cannot die. No, 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 no. My friend. Welcome in. Take the horse, follow the light. Take the horse and follow the light. What to the light? right. Oh. Follow those torches, follow those torches. Okay, thank you. Bro, he really was bad, getting man. chased by like a thousand mobs when I found him. Yeah, I actually <laughs> almost died. Welcome in, look at my weapons. Check them out. You let him make that? Yep. These are my he, weapons. He, want, he wanted a ball. Ball and chain and sword. I named my sword Sean Forglabs. And then this is the ball. Guys, bad news, this mob's coming now. Is the door shut? Yes. Then we're fine. <laughs> so you chose that guy. They're gonna kiss, they're gonna kiss. <laughs> uh, bad news guys, I'm hungry. We've got what food. What is that? That's a frog. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Why are you... I felt real bad about that. I think we should let this guy live, actually. <laughs> I felt real bad. No! But that's not all. Since I finished up half the walls, I had to start on the sand part, which meant me building up the sandstone to a specific height, then going back into the world to clear out even more sand and repeat this process until an elephant showed up. I wish I was joking. Somehow, protagonist had found a wandering elephant outside of the base. Of course, the new goal was to get him inside. We tried it a back way, but that thing did not want to move, all right? Every time we tried to lead it somewhere, it said nope. So we broke down the front gate of my beautiful castle and walked in our new pet. I guess getting an exotic animal is a cool thing to happen, but it didn't stop me from continuing my repetition on the castle wall. All until I was ordered by my boss to build up barracks. The goal of this build was to just be the corner of the castle. And no, Ryan isn't actually my boss, but when the king tells you to do something, you do it. Unfortunately, I didn't really love this build, at least on day three. I fixed it later, so I'm gonna kinda skip past it. All I did was start out by using a ton of dark oak to lay down the foundation of the build. My real idea with this thing is to just be a staircase from one level of the wall to the other. Since we built on a mountain, there's a slight increase in height. But since this took quite a lot of time and I'm already getting exhausted because it's 3 a.m. in real time of recording, I finished up what I could, vomited at the sight of it, and wrote it off as a day four task. My time has come. If you remember correctly, my orders are to kill Shadow and take his kingdom for Ryan. When the hit was put on him yesterday, he wasn't on. So as instructed, I began my hunt for him as soon as I logged in. Since I knew where the base was, it was only a good thousand plus block walk over some mountains to get there. But once I was close, I began my shifting journey. With my previous knowledge of the base, all I had to do was get close to the wall and hop over a single block. Once I saw my entrance, I got to it, keeping my pinky hard pressed on the shift key as the only people online are from Shadow's Kingdom. I had to be extremely careful with passing by a giant tower as I don't know who's in it or around it. I made my way to the lowest point comfortable and saw a name tag. Spartan Kid was here, but he left at the perfect time. I was starting to wonder if I'd ever be able to move from this position. I took to the tall grass to rehide myself as I was unsure of Shadow's exact location and who knows how fast that relog might be. And sure enough, he was back as soon as I was in position. I tried my best to keep an eye out for Shadow, but wasn't getting much data, so I repositioned once more to the top of his wall. Now I am basically out in the open. I ran all along the wall until I finally spotted my target. I popped strength and rushed in. Hey, Shadow! How's it going, bud? I have orders. Orders for what? To kill you! 
I laid the final blow and King Shadow was brought down to a mere mortal's level. Let's go. That's one for King Ryan, baby. He did log off instantly, so I figured he was mourning the death of himself. I went back home to continue my day. I'm fresh off a king kill, and I still had to finish up the base work to impress my own royalty. I fixed up the dreaded barracks from yesterday and ended up making it look 10 times better by changing a few colors on it. But I am still lacking some resources. I headed back to grab some levels from the depths of fire that I used to fix up my shovel. By the time I had gotten back, Shadow was awaiting my arrival at the base. At this point, I guess he's on our team? See this? I hopped this block and then eliminated Shadow when he didn't hit the record button. So technically, I'm standing over his dead body, but in reality, Sean rerolled the kill. So he can stay king and I am the fool. I am to be no one's fool, Sean. I'll get back to you in the dumbest way possible. But that means Shadow being at our base is also kind of against the rule. What is happening? Everything do be going wrong right now. I went back to working on the barracks anyway. I grabbed a little bit more dark oak if the dang white walkers would let me, then finished off the tower at the very top of our wall, and the barracks is finally looking okay. Then of course, I was back to getting sand. However, since this has been done before, I'll cut to the good stuff. I added slabs to the top of our walls and generally smoothed it out for my last task up here, the decor. Thankfully, it only took me an hour more of work, putting me halfway through day four already, just to finish up the castle wall. Holy cow, what a relief that it's done. And with Ryan and Protagonist now on, I was able to show off my build, but time was a-wasting, and apparently the rules haven't caught up to our young heroes yet. Yes, Ryan had the understanding that there was no rollback, since Sean still, after many, many hours, had not clarified it. So he took me and protagonist over there to the promised land. By the time we got there, we were able to do a little sneaking, apparently uh, against some rules again. How many is that now? Uh, I'll count, let me just check. We first left the territory on day one, then I hopped Shadow's wall for my scouting mission, then later killed him by doing the same penalty, only to re-enter his base after the fact. You know what, I think I'm the villain in this story, and I don't quite mind it. After such a mix up at Shadow's base, and Sean finally clarifying the rules after four days, we moved up our plans to declare war on the Dark King. However, now that he knows our plans, we have about 20% chance of success, and our death is almost guaranteed. But that will not stop me and Scavage from finding the most OP weapon in the game. Yes, that's right, I found a weapon that does so much damage, it takes away permanent hearts. However, with such a sword comes mistakes. I tried to show the effect to Ryan, who mind you is still only at 7 maximum hearts, and he ran away from me. In my pursuit, Scavage was behind me and a creeper was in front of me. Ryan and I avoided the creeper, but my comrade was not so lucky. <gasps> With an explosion, Ryan and I turned to look back to find Scavage dead on the ground. And that was the straw that broke the camel's back. We had lost an OG member of this team, our jester, our mascot. I am to mourn his death heavily, but unfortunately, the death happened at the end of our day, meaning war is coming and we're down another member. The last few hours before war will set in, I was focused on gearing up and making an attempt to save us. A while back, Sean sent a letter with items he needs for us to form a partnership, so I went on a gathering spree. First up, blaze rods. This was fun, just sitting here waiting patiently for a blaze. Exciting stuff. The other ask was for nether bricks, so I took out the inside of a fortress to appease our overlord. With the items gathered, Ryan logged on and sent a letter to Forge Labs. The gist is that he'll be sending a teammate over to negotiate an alliance. Of course, I am that said teammate. Now that Sean knows I'm coming, it's time to head out and make an exchange with possibly the second most unpredictable man on the server. I named myself number one since I'm apparently known to break a few rules now and again. Sean's base was a long ways away, and I had no idea on its location, only a direction. So I ventured the unknown lands and plenty of mountains until I met a swamp. I knew Sean liked river monsters, but not this much. I crept up in a tree and observed his base from a distance. Till I figured, live or let die. Hello? 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 Hi. Who's who's that? It's welcome and hello. How oh, are you doing? Lord. I am good. I was sent. You were sent? I was sent. I have By no Ryan? orders to kill. By Ryan, okay. indeed. I have no orders to kill. I cannot attack you. I'm here only as a friend with some gifts of, of goodwill. Okay. Come around. It's, if you come around to this side of the gate. I'm by the boat. Hello. Come on up. Hello. Hi. I oh my no god. You, got, you have scary armor. You have a spider behind you. Don't worry. I can get you the scary armor. The netherite? 
I okay. I have a few. Come on no. in. Am I am I gonna get blown up here? No, you're not gonna get this blown. Is, don't worry. This is actually really cool. Okay, so how did we get here? Let me just show you how fast I break another rule we're not aware of yet. As soon as I hit the bottom, I broke out. Who wouldn't? It's common sense. You're trapped, you get out. So I did. It was a tense moment with the boys, them determining whether or not I'm gonna kill them, and me determining basically the same thing. Well, it was 50-50. But I did as told and stayed inside the cell while they evaluated their options. I did want an alliance with them, so I tried my best to make them feel safe. And they let out an alligator on me. I don't know what that was all about. When they realized I wasn't a threat, they finally introduced me to the real base, and uh, let's just say I pled my case as best I could. That is a terrifying security measure for someone here sent on peace, Sean. But we, we don't know that. We don't know that for sure. Look, this... I will... What is... You have, you have a weird habit of trapping weird things. <laughs> Look, I am, I am here... What is that? On a oh, mission. Oh, the... the on okay. a mission, the only thing I cannot get is nether wart. We have a traitor in our midst who is stealing our own stuff, and I they they stole the nether wart and the farm. Okay, so I couldn't get you that. But someone can, stealing your stuff? You. Yes, there's someone Holy either crap. breaking into our base or someone who is a traitor. So I am not here to kill. Okay, we have to. We when when someone comes in, we need to have the upper hand just in case. No, no, we I was sent no kill order. I was sent with goodies and only to work out a a deal. I. Yeah, that is okay. it. So what we're thinking is, right now Shadow trusts us. So does Sneeve. Okay. In fact, we have something of Sneeve's that he'll want back very badly. What is it? One of his people. You have a, a person. <laughs> In that jail cell them? that you just, you didn't see the person you, you wanna, in the jail cell down there? Again? There's a real person yeah, come, or just come on. You we'll show, show you. you, show you. you can't tell anyone about this. This is the ultimate sign of trust. <laughs> we'll, we'll fall down right here again. Here's a safe spot to drop. Hi. Hello. How's oh. it going? It's you know, I, I would have, I would have wished not to find you in this position. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit rough, man. Listen, tell Steve where I am, and he will. Give okay, you that's you enough. You. Is that a hello? Oh, is that oh. protagonist? Uh, Sean, Hello. do not. Sean, I'm not gonna do, do it to him. I'm not do gonna not do it to, him. Do it to him. He's not. He's please do not. Come on drop. in. You can come all the way through. Good. After such a tour and an interesting conversation, protagonist arrived to pick me up like I'm a child. We left and I told him all that had happened. I do not trust Sean in the slightest, and since he has Kipley in a basement, maybe we can bargain her life with Sneeve so he won't help Shadow in this war. See, the thing is, Ryan's kingdom is mighty, but with Gundo so far, Shadow has the numbers and alliances, aka Sneeve. My idea is to use Kipley to get Sneeve off our back in the war, so we can go mano y mano with Shadow. We relayed all of that info to Ryan, and such a letter was sent out. But in the meantime, we have a lot to prepare for before anyone enters our desert. Protagonist and I started work on a falling sand TNT trap in front of the base. Of course, I was to help with the boring sign placing part, but hey, we all needed a pitch in. Next, we overlaid some sand, which was fun because I got the speed bridge, and the end product looked amazing. Like, I can't even tell that there's a fall trap here. Next, we worked out a redstone pathway to a TNT light that will destroy the main sign and drop players into the real TNT trap. Seems like a lot, but I figured out the system and we blocked off the lever from everyone. That's one trap we don't want to lose. Lastly was laying out TNT. However, I had to leave that to protagonist since this thing is his baby. Before all nether breaks loose in the known world, I was to scout Shadow's base to find out anything I can help us before war. At this point, I knew the way and now I had to avoid the guards. One was on patrol while I was hopping around. Notice how the walls are a bit higher since my last visit. Thankfully, no one was good at watching the ground and I was able to listen to a few useless conversations. However, the big thing I learned was that Kipley was out. The entire time, she was no prisoner, but in fact, a mirage blocking our vision to Sean's real goal. He in fact controlled Shadow and Sneeve, and was now the real enemy. I headed back to report, but now we are facing three kingpins alone. At this point, I know my end is near, no way we can handle such a fight without any losses. So I suggest to Ryan, we need Gundo. He sent a letter out begging for reinforcements, which were more than 20 minutes out and we may not have that kind of time. But we sat and wait, watching the mountains and the desert trail in case anyone attempted an attack. The only thing that happened in the next half an hour was us pleading for our lives with one another and the sight of a blue king. Out front, Wait. out front. Is it? It's Gundo. It's blue. It's blue. It's blue. Thank yeah. God. Gundo. Oh, they're here. 
I'll, I'll agree. I'll agree. Someone get down there. Yeah. They have mod weapons, great? so that's cool. Is this a welcoming? I have nothing in hand. I have oh, nothing in hand. God. I am a greeting. Oh, I, I trust am, you. I I'm trust a greet. You. I'm a greeting. I'm a greeting. Hello. Oh Welcome my in. God. Hello. I am not <coughs> kidding. We have just got mail from Sean, and we would love to invite you guys inside. We have. <laughs> We have some big plays going on. All right, come on in. Do not, um, do not mine the sand. Do not mine the sand. Do not mine. Do not touch. Trust the me. Sand. Do not do mine not the sand the below sand you. Underwater. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We're yeah. not gonna set we it should, off. Don't worry. We should step inside. Honestly, yeah, it's better if you're inside because this right here is all TNT. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> With Laguno and his team arriving, we have a higher chance of victory, but a battle is still looming. The Red Kingdom was to stand guard at the gate and await the arrival of a possible enemy while Gundo and his mates were held up in the barracks, away from all view. I will tell you, I was shaking at this point. I'm ready to lead a fight, die in one, but not let Ryan lose his kingdom to Sean, Sneeve, or Shadow. Time continued to tick away as we watched the runway. Some part of me hoped that no one would show up, but of course, we saw a horde of players sprint towards our castle. It was clear to us that we won't all make it, but with protagonists already held below staring at a lever, we might just have a chance. To skip the formalities, they wanted a 10 versus 1 against me. However, we had a few other ideas. The line for protagonist to pull the lever was just simply his name. Ryan and I bounced the convo exactly there. I'll send protagonist your way. Yeah, send protagonist so. down. And once the sand fell, we watched as players scrambled under the threat of TNT. In the chaos, King Sean was killed. I don't know what kind of fire activated in me, but it was a poor one. I purled into battle, favoring a weapon I lacked knowledge of, I tried my hand at Kipley, but was quickly backstabbed in my escape attempt. And I died. Yes, all the work just to be taken out by the same man I greeted at the very beginning- I hate you, Shin. But with my death, many others fell, and you can see it all unfold in my King's video. The next two days are epic, taking a castle, having Sean under his wing, and many more adventures you have to see in Ryan's video. So please go check it out as it's a basic continuation of my own video. If you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button down below and subscribe to the channel. Comment whether or not I need to bug Sean to be in future events. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one.